Have you seen Jesus, my Lord? He's here in plain view. Take a look, open your eyes. He'll show it to you. Have you ever looked at the sunset with the sky? Suspended like feathers, then I say, You've seen Jesus, my Lord. Have you seen Jesus, my Lord? He's here in plain view. Take a look. white foam at your feet, felt the endless thundering motion, then I'd say, you've seen Jesus, my Lord, have you seen Jesus, my Lord?
morning, good morning, good morning. Welcome to Peace United Methodist Church. My name is Jim Burlow and I'm the pastor here at Peace and it's great to, to have everyone gathered together online worshiping with us. We're thrilled that you're here and oh my gosh, it's Confirmation Sunday. Yes. And this room has more people in it than it had in 2020, the rest of the previous year. So it, this is ex super exciting that we've got everybody here gathered together for this exciting day, and we're thrilled that you're with us as well. Um, let's go over some announcements real quick before we get started with our service. The first thing is, not only is it Confirmation Sunday today, but it's also Trunk or Treat! We are so excited that we're able to continue having this major community outreach event from our church. And uh, it's going to be a wonderful evening for everyone involved. And so we encourage you to uh, come on out and check it out and be a part of the fun. This is going to be a safe, secure event. We've got a great plan in how to uh, distribute the candy in a safe manner, and it's just going to be a wonderful time for families and for everyone. And so we're grateful for all of you who have donated all of that candy. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And uh, we're glad for all the volunteers that will be here. We pray that God is seen through our efforts tonight, and we're excited for this event. Uh, we also want to let you know that coming up next Sunday, it's All Saints Day. And that's a day where we take time as a church to reflect and remember those in our lives whom we have lost in the past year, but even beyond that. And so we want to have a special time of, uh, of celebrating those people in our lives. And so we're encouraging you to think about who you might want to honor uh, 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 on this day and then send Jonathan uh, an email with the picture and the name of that person. And so you'll see the email right here on the screen. And we just encourage you to think through somebody that you might want to lift up and honor. And then we'll have a nice special point in our worship service next Sunday where we'll, we'll remember all of those important people in our lives. Uh, we also want to make sure you remember we've got a food drive that we're uh, partnering with the uh, Boy Scouts that they're leading. It's going to be in Osprey Park on Saturday, November 14th at 9 a.m. And it's going to be a great way for us to roll up our sleeves and help Serve our community. And so we want to encourage you to uh, mark that date on your calendar and be there at Osprey Park on that Saturday to help the Boy Scouts with this great event that they're doing. We're also thrilled that we've got people with us in the room and online for the first time. And so if that's you, we encourage you to go to our Connect page on our website and just fill out that form so we can get you some more information about who we are as a church. And then also for all of us, as this is worship, and as we uh, look for ways to give of our tithe and our offering, we encourage you to go to peaceumcgiving.org. You can follow that QR code right there and it will take you right to it. But it's a safe and secure way for you to electronically give your tithe and your offering this morning. And so we're gathered here together this morning to praise God. Can I get an amen on that one? And we're gathered here together to celebrate these confirmands joining the church. But we're also gathered together this morning to find peace together as a community. And so let's put our hands together because we're excited that we will find peace this morning. Let's applaud that. <laughs> My name is Julio. Hi, I'm Logan Gore. Hi, I'm Andrew Caffey. I'm Joel. I'm Mason Sell. I'm Noah. Hi, I'm Holly Caffrey. Hi, I'm Dylan Hoovengarner. I'm Jackie Morin. And I found peace. 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 Good morning, Peace Church. We are so glad you are here with us in worship this morning. Whether you're in the room or online, we invite you to take a moment and join us in worship. If you feel free, you are welcome to stand. Darkness 
opportunity to join the children for the children's story this week. So let's tune in to Miss Julie and the kids' story. Woot, 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 woot. My dragon says hello. How are you guys today? All good? How about you, Brandon? You good? Yeah, I'm good. Good. W- what's happening here? He's getting baptized. A baby's being baptized. Have you guys ever seen um, this happen in real life? Yes, with the baby. Yes. Yes, yes I have. Yes, I have. Yes. Remember at the church? What is baptism? They get water on their head. Well, the meaning is more than just dunking water on your head. It's um, holy water and water that was like prayed for that signifies you being reborn. Oh, when someone becomes a God lover? Well, what I think baptizing means is introducing the baby into a Christian family. How old do you have to be to be baptized? I know, I know. Zero. You don't have to be old at all. You have to be one year old. You can be four. You can be any age, because Jace and Maddie got theirs when they were eight. Have you guys been baptized? No, I don't think I was. We have pictures of us when we got baptized when we were little. I got baptized by Bob Shaw. Bob Shaw goes to our church. Yeah. So I also got baptized with water from the Jordan River. I made a mistake. I made what? A mistake. 
I thought he said Bob Ross. Oh, Bob Ross. <laughs> I thought oh, yeah. you could use it as no. Bob Ross. Do you have to do anything to be baptized? Well, you have to be a God follower. Why would you want to be baptized? You want to do as best as possible to like follow Jesus in your life, sort of like a symbolism. So you're reborn in the name of Jesus, which is very special. Some parents have their children baptized when they're babies. And when they do that, they are making the promise on behalf of the child that they will help that child grow up in a Christian environment. Some people get baptized when they're kids, and then some adults get baptized. That when you get baptized, it's like you're making a promise to God that you're gonna follow God. Sometimes when you're confirmed, you haven't been baptized. so. There's some kids going to be baptized today. Did you know that once you're baptized, you don't have to do it again? Yeah, it makes sense. Then you go through confirmation, and confirmation is where you make the decision, yes, I agree with my baptism, and I'm going to continue to follow God. Let's, vote. Well, let's pray real quick. Yeah. Dear God, thank you for everything that you have done. Please protect the people who are being torn apart inside by these things that are happening in the world. Thank you for this awesome life you have given us. Please help all the people that are having a hard time trying to get through coronavirus. I want to thank you, Lord, for sticking with us. I pray for Brandon. I pray for Caden. I pray for Ms. Bowie. I pray for everybody in this call. There's a lot of things that are dark in this world right now, but I know that you will do what you do, God, and at the end of the day, a light will shine out of nowhere. In your holy and blessed name we pray, amen. I don't know if I'm going to be able to get that image out of my mind of Bob Shaw with Bob Ross hair sitting in front of a canvas. That's just going to be something that endures for a while. <laughs> that was great. Hey, uh, just to let you all know, so uh, Julie Chatfield is home right now. She had a partial knee replacement this week, and so she's home. So we lift up uh, prayers for Julie and her recovery and her time of healing and that fun of physical therapy that now lies ahead of her. Um, you know, I'm so excited that we're, uh, we're finally able to make confirmation happen today. I feel like it was just yesterday when, when I was confirmed. Uh, and one of the cool things about confirmation is you get a bunch of presents, right? Family and friends give you things. I remember I received this really cool Bible. Um, and then, uh, you know what my parents gave me? I still have it today. A savings account. And then, of course, what was, uh, yeah, you could applaud that. It was good. It was good. And I'm happy that I still have it. <laughs> But then what was really funny is right on the heels of that, the church gave me as a present a box of offering envelopes. So that's interesting. But I was, I was really excited about it because it had my name printed on them. They were numbered, right? It had the, the black and white image of the outside of the church printed on front of them. And I was genuinely excited because now I was able to give my offering. I was now an official member of the church. I was part of the family. I always remember uh, this guy, Mr. Bruce. He was this uh, old seminary professor with a cool Dumbledore-like beard, right, that it was a part of the church. And he was, uh, he was in the choir. He led the bell choir. And I remember he would always be standing outside on Wednesday nights after rehearsal smoking a pipe. And uh, Mr. Bruce was, was great. He was uh, the leader of this puppet ministry that he had started. And that's where he and I connected. He knew my love for theater, and he invited me to be a part of this really cool thing that he was doing. And so we built the puppet stage together. We all had these characters and these scripts. And, and we were, uh, I would say we were two levels below the Muppets and maybe one level up from Fraggle Rock. And so we, we'd travel all over. We'd go to retirement homes. We'd go to assisted living facilities. We'd go to other churches, and we put on these, these puppet shows that taught biblical lessons. Mr. Bruce, he was this theological genius. <laughs> and yet here he was putting on puppet shows with high school and middle school students. The day I got confirmed, he gave me just this simple bookmark. It has the prayer of St. Francis on it. 
Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. And where there is sadness, joy. Mr. Bruce, his puppets, his pipe, with his beard, he instilled within me the desire to be an instrument of the Lord. And so what if he and I never met? What if Mr. Bruce and I never took the time to talk to each other? What, what if he never asked me to be a part of that puppet ministry? I don't know. Maybe, maybe I would have learned this lesson to be an instrument of the Lord somewhere along the line, but maybe I wouldn't. For Mr. Bruce, I really want you to hear me here. For him, the church wasn't just about adults doing adult things and then making room for the kids along the way. No, for him, the church was a family, a family worth fighting for. And that's, that's what we're talking about this morning as we finish up this series, Reclaiming the Family. We all need a family of families, if you will. See, our intergenerational connection within the church, that can be the very thing, the best example of our reflection of God in the world around us. So being intentional about coming together across the generational divide, that is what is key to reclaiming the family, reclaiming who we are as peace church. Author Diana Garland wrote, the church family is vital as it forms and fosters, adopts and enfolds not just one particular age group, but all. She goes on to say that each person and each generation within the church family, they bear the same responsibility for embodying grace and peace and commitment and empowerment. All characteristics that form this powerful foundation for families within the larger church family. And so that means, I hope you're tracking with me here, that we have values here at Peace. I'm wondering if you can remember what they are. We, we talk about them a lot. Welcome, develop, and engage. Let's try saying that. You at home, us here, let's say that. Welcome, develop, and engage. We value the sacred worth of all people. We desire to, to grow in discipleship. We seek to engage the community and the world in service and justice. And the point is that those values, they should be seen within each and every one of the adults who are part of this church. But they should also be seen in every one of our students they should also be readily apparent in every one of the older adults in this congregation. It should be visible within our children. We should even see those values emerging from our preschoolers. For Garland, we all bear the burden of reflecting those values into the community. But what does that require of us? <laughs> well, it means that those who have found those values need to share them. An older person passes it along to a teenager. An elderly person lovingly models it to a child. Think about this for a second. Have you ever looked at someone else in the church and thought, you know, I'll bet that they understand me. <laughs> I'll bet that we'd really connect with each other. I'm sure I can learn something from them. But then we don't follow up on that impulse. And why is that? I think we, we probably know what those answers are. We get intimidated, right? We, we think we're going to be judged or rejected, or we, we feel like we don't have enough time, like our schedule won't allow for it. We don't have enough emotional bandwidth to develop a relationship with yet another person. But friends, this is where the word fight comes into play. When we say fighting for the family, we're not talking about fighting some nameless evil out there somewhere that's threatening the moral fabric of our world. No, when we say fighting for the family, it's about fighting what we have going on inside here that keeps us 
from reaching across that generational divide. Are you with me? In a little while, you're going to see 10 amazing young people stand up here and publicly claim their identity as a Christian. That's a big deal. It's not to be taken lightly. Some will even be baptized. And all of them will join this church. They will become official members of Peace Church. So let me ask you, don't you think that they would benefit from knowing you? Don't you think that you taking the time to to know them would strengthen the church as a whole? I mean, what impact could you have on their lives? And better yet, what might God do through them in your life? I don't know. But maybe this week you could send each one of these amazing students a a congratulations card in the mail. Maybe you could just commit for this next week to pray for each one of them by name every day. Or how about this? What if you just threw out some kudos and some congratulations in the comment section right now? I wonder, how might you begin to shape for the future Those values welcome, develop, and engage. For we are a family. And now they will be an official part of our family. Offering envelopes and all. (laughs) See, friends, the point is we're not building, and I really want you to hear me here, we're not building the church for today, for us. That's not what we're doing. We're building the church for tomorrow, for those who are to come. And so we must fight through the discomfort. We must work through all of our crowded, over-bloated schedules. We must open our hearts to becoming intergenerational in all of our thinking, in all of our ministries, in our lives here together. Author Mary Ann Evans, more commonly known by her pen name George Eliot, once said, What greater thing is there for human souls than to feel that they are joined for life? To be with each other in silent, unspeakable memories. That's what we're fighting for. Those silent, unspeakable memories memories. Thank God Mr. Bruce fought for them with me. May we do the same for others. Worship you, I worship you. 
Amen. It's a little strange. Yeah, it's a little intense. It, uh, it actually comes in the middle of chapter 4 of Nehemiah. And so yeah. Nehemiah um, is, is leading this effort to rebuild the city of Jerusalem. It's uh, his hometown. It's been decimated by the Babylonians. And so he's got this group of people working on rebuilding the city, but they're under threat. Hmm, interesting. But Nehemiah, he gives them this word of encouragement, right? Yeah, yeah. He, um, he, he actually gets them ready for a battle. He places them strategically along this wall that surrounds the city. It's a wall that they've been working on rebuilding, and he tells them not to be afraid to fight. Hmm. But what's really cool is who he tells them they're fighting for. And so let's hear from uh, Dylan Hoopengartner, one of our confirmants, as he shares with us Nehemiah chapter 4, verses 10 to 14. But Judah said, The strength of the burden bearers is failing, and there is too much rubbish so that we are unable to work on the wall. And our enemies said, They will not know or see anything before we come upon them and kill them and stop their work. When the Jews who live near them came, they said to us ten times, From all the places where they live, they will come up against us. So in the lowest parts of the space behind the wall, in open places, I stationed the people according to their families, with their swords, their spears, and their bows. After I looked these things over, I stood up and said to the nobles and the officials and the rest of the people, Do not be afraid of them. Remember the Lord, who is great and awesome, and fight for your kin, your sons, your daughters, your wives, and your homes. Verse 10, right at the beginning, really stood out to me. It says, the strength of the burden bearers is failing. Yeah, yeah, there's too much rubbish. We're unable to work on the wall. But that's interesting because it feels like defeat, yet has the battle even started? Well, sort of, right? So we see this repetition all through Nehemiah where those who are working on the wall, they, they make some headway, but then they, they experience some, some, some opposition. They, they maybe make some forward progress, but then all of a sudden they're hit with mm. some setbacks. And so uh, at this particular point, they're uh, being questioned and they're being mocked and they're being threatened by all these opposing groups of people around them. Hmm. But the Jews, they warned the people who are working, that there were these threats, right? Yeah, 10 times. And that's actually this Hebrew expression for over and over and over again. And so Nehemiah's basic point is this opposition that we keep hearing about, it's going to happen. That this battle that we're warned about, we're going to have to fight it. So don't be afraid to fight for our families, to, mm. to fight for the greater good. I mean, he's basically telling them, look, God's got this. Hmm. But in, in, this, in this passage, Nehemiah has actually placed the people at the lower parts of the wall in these open spaces. Why? Well, does that sound like a place of safety or security to you? No. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. And so he has absolutely put them along these different places in the wall that were vulnerable, places that he was concerned about, right? And so he places them there to protect those places in the wall. But I almost feel like there's a reminder here for all of us, too, that we should be looking after, that we should be focused on, and that we should be empowering the most vulnerable in our family. And that's why Nehemiah tells them to remind, it reminds them who they're fighting for. Right, right. They had clearly allowed their focus to just be solely on the threat that was coming, mm. right? And Nehemiah's point is, don't forget who this is all about. Mm. Interesting. And so while as a church family, we're not necessarily under attack, right? But we have plenty of things as a church family that we can fight for, right? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, just look at these amazing students. Everybody in the room, take a look at these amazing students here. They are such a reminder to us of how important it is as we reclaim the family of peace mm. that we have to, or we can't let the generational divide deepen. I mean, think about how we as a church can impact our community if we all were intentional about crossing intergenerational lines and mm. really caring for each other. Mm. Can, I, uh, can I share a story with you? 
Absolutely. Good. I'm glad you said that because <laughs> then we wouldn't know what to do if you right. were like, no. Yeah. Uh, no so, uh, so Neil Blackiter, right? He's the uh, the chair of our board of trustees sitting we right over there. love <laughs> Neil. Neil has actually been working on the Youth Room Project with us, and we all love him, and we are very grateful for all the work that he's been doing. Yeah, so he was sharing with me a little bit about that work that, that everyone's doing, and uh, he was telling me how he was in the room there with four middle school boys, and they're trying to pull up this carpet, but they're really struggling with it. It's mm -hmm. a carpet in the 45s portion of the room that I think has been there for 25 years or more. This carpet is brutal. <laughs> brutal. <laughs> right. And so, so he's, he's trying to help them. And then he looks over and he sees this other boy standing in the corner uh, who's just kind of quietly over there. So he goes over and he asks him if he has a project to do. And the boy said, well, I'm not really good with these work projects. And he said, well, can you count? And, uh, and so he brings the boy over and he tells the four middle schoolers, hey, when he counts to three and says pull, all of you pull your carpet at the same time. And so the boy starts and he goes, one, two, three, pull. And Neil's like, no, 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 no. You have to say it like you mean it. One, two, three, pull. One, two, three, pull. And so the boy starts getting hyped up, and he starts saying it that way. Yeah. And the four middle schoolers are all pulling at the same time. And that 25-year-old carpet came up. Mm, I remember that moment. It was so cool. <laughs> That's great. But what's really cool is when that boy's parents came to pick him up later that night, before he left, he ran over to Neil and he thanked him for it being such a great night. And when Neil was telling me that story, he said it was a great night for him as well. It was one of the best nights he'd had in a long time. And that right there is the power of this intergenerational ministry, Absolutely. right? That's the power of that relationship that Neil and that boy were able to create. Definitely. And that's what we mean when we're saying we have to fight for these opportunities. I mean, who knows? Who knows what will come mm -hmm. within our church, within the community, within the world even, from that one moment between Neil and that boy. Mm -hmm. That's what this is all about. I love that. Thank you for sharing that story, Jim. Uh, speaking of intergenerational ministry, speaking of impact, we have one of our very impactful students, one of our confirmands, Crystal, who's going to share with us in a time of prayer. So let's join her. Let's pray. Dear Lord Jesus, we thank you for the Sunday morning where we could come together, putting all our differences aside and worship you in one spirit. We praise you for being our wonderful counselor, mighty God, everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. We ask that you forgive us for our sins and wash us with your precious blood. We pray for all the doctors, nurses, and caregivers in this time of desperation, that you will guide them and keep them safe. We pray for all the people affected by COVID, that you will be their healer. We pray for people who are hurting, lonely, people who have lost their jobs, for the homeless, that you would be their hope and anchor. May your grace and mercy be with them every day. We pray for our family members, our extended family members, and our grandparents for your hand of protection around them. Lord Jesus, help us to continue to worship with an open heart and truth. We love you and we ask this prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. So we are, uh, thank you, Crystal. We are grateful for the many ways in which our church has been uh, has been overcoming challenges to continue to be faithful to the Lord and to give in incredibly generous ways. And so we want to uh, encourage you at this time, if you haven't, to, to go to peaceumcgiving.org and to uh, give of your tithe and your offering there as we together enjoy this wonderful music from our online choir.
gathered together with our confirmands up front to celebrate this uh, joining of the church and proclaiming as uh, individuals that, that we are taking on the Christian life. And so, uh, so we're thrilled. Um, just a word of note for everyone that's, uh, that's here gathered together with us that we were, I think, Emma, was it two weeks away yep. from, uh, from this confirmation class having this ceremony when we had to close our doors down. And so this is a very, very exciting thing that we have finally been able to get to this point. And so let's Woo. applaud them for, uh, for being here and making this happen. Brothers and sisters in Christ, through the sacrament of baptism, we are initiated into Christ's holy church. We're incorporated into God's mighty acts of salvation and given new birth through water and the Spirit. All of this is God's gift offered to us without price. Through confirmation and through the reaffirmation of our faith, we renew our covenant that covenant declared at our baptism. We acknowledge what God is doing for us, and we affirm our commitment to Christ's holy church. Pastor Jim, I present this year's confirmation class for confirmation. All right, so we, uh, we have some questions that we want to ask all of you, and we're going to go around person to person in the room here, and they'll ask you some theological questions, and we'll just have you answer I'm joking. Okay, so <laughs> let's go over these questions. On behalf of the whole church, I ask you, do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, reject the evil powers of this world, and repent of your sin? I do. Come on, let's say it like we mean it, all right? <laughs> do you accept the freedom and power God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves? Do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior, put your whole trust in his grace, and promise to serve him as your Lord in union with the church, which Christ has opened to people of all ages, all nations, and all races? According to the grace given to you, will you remain faithful members of Christ's holy church and serve as Christ's representatives in the world? 
Now I'd like to ask a question of all of those who are gathered here as mentors. These uh, individuals from our congregation in the community spent time with each conferman. They each had an individual mentor throughout the whole journey of uh, 10 weeks, meeting with them regularly, spending time answering questions each week, helping shape their understanding of what confirmation and being a Christian is all about. And, uh, and it's just a really exciting commitment, something we've been talking about this morning. And so to those mentors, Will you, who sponsor each one of these confirmands, support and encourage them continually in their Christian life? And now we have some questions to our congregation as a whole because we're all a part of this. None of us are off the hook here. And uh, so do you, as Christ's body, the church, reaffirm both your rejection of sin and your commitment to Christ? We do. Will you nurture one another in the Christian faith and life and include these persons now before you in your care? I hope that you at home are reading out loud and joining with us as well. With God's help, we will proclaim the good news and live according to the example of Christ. We will surround, we will surround these, these persons with a community, community of love and forgiveness that they may grow in their trust of God and be found faithful in their service to others. We will pray for them that they may be true disciples who walk in the way that leads to life. Let us join together in professing the Christian faith is contained in the scriptures of the Old and New Testaments. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven, is seated at the right hand of the Father, and will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Amen. And now we're going to uh, begin the portion where each student will, each confirmant will come up individually. And so we're going to transition into that place if you guys want to get into place. And um, this is an exciting part. This water serves an important role in this because we either reaffirm our baptism in these moments. We'll even have someone being baptized for the first time this morning. It's a very, very exciting thing. And so let's, let's pray over uh, the water. Not that this becomes something that's uh, mystical, if you will, but that we're, we're praying for how God will use this ordinary element to do extraordinary things in this moment. And so let's pray. Eternal Father, when nothing existed but chaos... You swept across the dark waters and brought forth light. In the fullness of time, you sent Jesus, who was baptized by John, anointed by your spirit, and called his disciples to share in the baptism of his death and resurrection, making disciples of all of us, of all nations. Lord, pour out your Holy Spirit to bless this gift of water. And those who receive it, to clothe them in righteousness throughout their lives, that dying and being raised with Christ, they may share in his final victory. Amen. Pastor, I present Noah Riley Benison for reaffirmation of baptism and confirmation. Noah, remember your baptism and be thankful. Let's pray. Noah, the Holy Spirit work within you, that being born of water and the Spirit, you may live 
as a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Pastor, I present Julio Cesar Borges for reaffirmation of baptism and confirmation. Julio, remember your baptism and be thankful. Julio, the Holy Spirit work within you. That being born of water and the Spirit, you may live as a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. Pastor, I present Andrew Philip Caffrey for confirmation. Andrew, the Holy Spirit work within you. That being born of water and the Spirit, you may always live as a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. I present Holly Lynn Caffery for confirmation. Talk about reclaiming the family, right? <laughs> this is great. <laughs> Holly, the work of the Holy Spirit continues within you that you may always live as a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. I present Dylan Michael Hoopen Garner for reaffirmation of baptism and confirmation. Dylan, remember your baptism and be thankful. Let's pray. Dylan, the Holy Spirit work within you, that being born of water and the Spirit, you may live as a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. I present Joel Alexander Mercado for reaffirmation of baptism and confirmation. Joel, remember your baptism and be thankful. Let's pray. Joel, the Holy Spirit work within you, that being born of water and the Spirit, you may live as a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 I present Jacqueline Elizabeth Morin for reaffirmation of baptism and confirmation. Jacqueline, remember your baptism and be thankful. Let's pray. Jacqueline, the Holy Spirit work within you, that being born of water and the Spirit, you may always be a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. I present Agnetha Frederick Pitala for reaffirmation of baptism and confirmation. Agnetha, remember your baptism and be thankful. Let's pray. Agnetha, the Holy Spirit work within you, that being born of water and the Spirit, you will live as a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Pastor, I present Logan Bryce Poor for baptism and confirmation. Logan Bryce Poor, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And because I've eaten many breakfasts with you, I'm going to give you a little bit extra. <laughs> <laughs> Let's pray. Logan. The Holy Spirit continue to work within you. That being born of water and the Spirit, you may live as a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 And 
and I present Mason J. Sell for reaffirmation of baptism. Mason, remember your baptism and be thankful. Let's pray. Mason, the Holy Spirit work within you, that being born of water and the Spirit, you may live as a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. And now for all of us, let's take a time of reflection as we worship along with our youth praise band resounding worship.
We are, uh, we're almost there. <laughs> Just have a couple more questions. And this part is really about you joining the church specifically. And so we ask you these questions. As members of Christ's universal church, will you be loyal to the United Methodist Church and do all in your power to strengthen its ministries? And as members of this congregation of Peace Church, will you faithfully participate in its ministries by your prayers, your presence, your gifts, your service, and your witness? And now we're going to turn to the congregation here. Members of the household of God, I am honored and blessed and commend these persons to your love and care. Do all in your power to increase their faith, confirm their hope, and perfect them in love. We give thanks for all that God has already given you, and we welcome you in Christian love. As members together with you in the body of Christ and in this congregation of the United Methodist Church, we renew our covenant faithfully to participate in the ministries of the church by our prayers, our presence, our gifts, our service, and our witness, that in everything God may be glorified through Jesus Christ. The God of all grace, who has called us to eternal glory in Christ, establish you and strengthen you by the power of the Holy Spirit, that you may live in grace and in peace. And now it's my honor to introduce all of us to the newest members of Peace United Methodist Church. Let's put our hands together and welcome the confirmation class of 2020. children and their children and their children may 
his favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children and their children may his favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children wonderful morning of worship it has been. I invite you to uh, join me in prayer as we close out our time in worship. God, thank you for this day. Thank you for this time to come to you, God, and just lift up our hearts to you, Lord. We pray over these amazing young people who have just joined our church. We pray that they continue to fight for our church family. And we pray that as they grow and as they develop here, that you continue to shower over them with your grace and your goodness, God. And I pray that all of those in our congregation, that we continue to be developed here, God, and we continue to invest in this community, to invest in this family, continue to fight for this family, God, because we know that you have blessed us with amazing people, with amazing experiences here, and we pray that you just continue to allow us to live those up in your name. God, please bless us. Keep us safe as we go out this week and pray that as we continue during this difficult time that we know that you are for us always. In your name we pray, amen. So as you know, there are lots of exciting things coming up. And we hope that you will continue to join us for those. So on Saturday, November 14th, we are partnering with the Boy Scouts. And we hope that you will join us for the Scouting for Food drive through Food Drive at Osprey Park starting at 9 a.m. Mark your calendars. And then don't forget to uh, think about who it is that you want to honor and lift up in memory uh, next Sunday on All Saints Day and get that picture and that name over to Jonathan through email. He'll want to see that from you and we'll include it in worship. And although this has been an amazing time of worship, if you would like to continue to worship by um, doing communion or continuing in a time of musical worship, you should go to our YouTube page um, to continue that time. And don't forget, we have our Pursuing Peace class that meets right after this service on uh, Zoom. And so if you are able to, jump into that class so you can continue the dialogue about what we've been talking about this morning. But it has been a great morning. We're thrilled once more to celebrate the uh, confirmation class of 2020. And I don't know if you saw Saw it. But we, uh, we took the liberties of hanging their banner on the cross, so it's really sacred. You know that it means something. But I hope you got a chance to see that. And uh, we hope that you join us next Sunday in worship. Have a great week, everyone.